Hi everyone, this is Matt from Open Builds. In this instructional video, we're going to show you how to wire up your 1515. It's going to be a really simple process thanks to the Open Builds extension system, which includes our extension connectors and wires cut to pre cut lengths. Everything's going to be ran through drag chain, so it's going to be nice and aesthetically pleasing. And everything, of course, is going to run back to your black box motion control system, which is a super simple system to hook up. It's basically plug and play. We're also going to be going over the details of the software. So Open Builds Control software will be downloaded, and by the end of this video, you will be running your machine without any complications. So make sure to stay tuned and follow along with the steps, and let's get started. Okay, on this first step, what we're going to be doing is simply assembling our wires in a fashion to where we can organize them into our drag chain and, of course, run this back to our motion control system, which is going to be the black box. So it's a really simple step. Basically, what we have here is our different length wires. We have one wire here at 18 feet, another at 13 feet, and then two at 3 feet. So as you can imagine, the 18-foot wire is going to be for the axis that needs the longest run, which is going to be the z-axis. The second at 13 feet will be for the x-axis, which is also going to need an additional length to run that long run of 1,500 millimeters. And then we have the three-foot lengths, which will be for the back of the y-axis. So we'll have the NEMA 23s on the back end. All they need is a three-foot length, so it's relatively short. So just an overview of where these wires will be going. Now to start off, what we're going to do is turn our attention to one of our motors. So this is the Z-axis here. It's the top of the Z-axis, and this is our NEMA 23 motor. So as you can see, we have two connectors. We have a female that's attached to the motor, and then the male that's attached to the female. Basically what we're going to do is go around and gather all of our male connectors from all of our motors. That way we can insert our wires, our four conductor wires, into each motor. So let's go ahead and do that first. So once we've gathered all of our male connectors, you'll see that we have the pins right up top here. And basically what you need is a flathead screwdriver to move these into a position to where they can accept the wires. These should actually come at a fully open position here so you can see the inside of each one of these slots. So basically all I need to do is insert my wires and then clamp these down. Now if you don't see the openings then you need to loosen each pin on top. So for conductor wire you're going to see a red wire, blue, green, and yellow. So the, the coils on the motor are broken off into pairs. So what we need to make sure is that our red and blue stick together here on one side and then green and yellow are on the opposite side. So when adapting our wires here to the male connector, we just need to make sure that each one will correspond with the opposite color. So based on the way that the coil pairs work on my motors, red will start first here on the right, next will be blue, following that green, and following that yellow. So I'm going to insert my wires in that order. As you can see, red, blue, green, and yellow. And then I'll tighten down my pins on my connector. Uh, one thing to pay attention to is make sure that the, the conductive side of the wiring, which is the exposed wire here, is fully inserted into this connector. So my red here is actually a little out, and basically the reason we want these fully inserted is due to any type of connection issue. So if we had two of these wires touching one another while the motor is running, you could have a short, which in turn will short the black box, and you could have a burnt driver. So you just want to make sure that those are inserted fully. Okay, so now we have our 18 foot cable with the male connector now attached. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this to my NEMA 23 motor on the Z axis. So simple connection. Once again, you're going to verify that your wires do correspond red and red, blue and blue, green and green, and yellow and yellow. So that looks good. I'm going to take the excess and throw it behind the machine. And next we'll move to the 13 foot cable. So with the 13 foot cable, so again, we're going to come here to our male connector, make sure that our pins are fully open. And from there, we'll add our coil pairs into the male pin connector. OK, 
Okay, now that we have our 13 foot cable assembled here with our male connector, once again, it's red, blue, green, and yellow. We're gonna to move to the x-axis motor here on the right side of the machine. And we're simply going to connect that male connector. Let's again double check these. Red with red, blue with blue, green with green, and yellow with yellow. That looks good. And we'll take the excess wire here and place it towards the back. Next we have our two three foot cables. So we're gonna go ahead and assemble those to the male connectors together. And then we'll connect those to both Y1 and Y2 motors on the back of the machine. Okay, and then we'll move to the back of the machine and connect both of these wires. So here on the back of the machine, I'm just gonna go ahead and tie in one of my male connectors. Once again, double check those wire pairs. Red and red, blue and blue, green and green, and yellow and yellow. I can't stress that enough. If you do something wrong here in the wiring portion, you're gonna have all kinds of problems that you're gonna have to trace back to your controller. So once again, it might seem redundant, but we're gonna double check all the wire connections. Make sure that your wires are fully inserted, your pins are clamped down. This is just a very important step. So if you wanna do this correctly, just follow along with these steps. Make sure that you do have those wires in this order. So once again, it doesn't matter. These are both three foot cables. So we're gonna be using a three foot cable for each Y motor. So don't concern yourself with which motor gets which wire. Next for the Y2 motor, once again, it's just a three foot cable. Double check those wire colors, make sure that they do correspond. And now that we have all of our wires connected, we're gonna go ahead and move forward to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be assembling our micro limit switches as well as adding our three conductor wire to each one of these limit switches and the corresponding axis that it will be working with. So you can see that I have two already built up here and the configuration that these are set in is with our solder joints here on the back end. So you see that the screw and the access hole for the screw is on the top front of the plate versus the opposite. So two of those are gonna be built in that manner. And then I have one micro limit switch here broken out with all the parts that are included in the kit. So basically you have your micro limit switch that's attached to the PCB plate, which has all the solder joints here. And then you have the front plate, you have a nylon spacer, two self-threading screws, a drop-in T-nut, a spacer, and an M5 18 millimeter screw. So that's all that comes with the kit. It's a pretty basic assembly, but we'll go over that. That's why I have this one broken out for you. In addition to that, we'll also need our three conductor wire. We'll have two at 18 feet and one at 13 feet. And along with that, my tooling, I'll be using a two millimeter ball driver, three millimeter ball driver, and a flat head screwdriver for this step. So to get started, first we're gonna pay attention here to our micro limit switch. This one's going to be configured a little bit differently than these two that I just showed you. Basically everything in the assembly will remain the same. It's just the orientation of the screw at the end. Basically the solder joints will be exposed because we need the gantry to interact, interact with the plunger on this side. So adding the front plate, you'll use the two self-threading screws here. Basically, I just put those into place like so. And use the two millimeter ball driver, and we're gonna thread those into the switch. Okay, once that's complete, I'm gonna flip this around. I'm gonna add my spacer here to the middle of the sandwich in the plates. And then I'm gonna add my M5 18 millimeter screw. And once again, you see that the solder joints here are visible. That's where the head of the screw should be. And then add your spacer and drop in T-nut. Now that that's threaded into place, we have all of our micro limit switches built up. So next we're gonna go to the placement of each switch. First, I wanna focus on the Z-axis. That's going to be at the top of our machine here. So for the Z-axis, we're gonna take the uh, micro limit switch that has those solder joints visible and using the three millimeter ball driver we're going to place this in this top left side of the C-beam and once that's in position you can simply adjust your gantry plate here on the z-axis to see how the gantry plate is going to interact with your micro limit switch so coming close here to the plunger as I rotate my gantry plate upright you can see how it activates the micro limit switch, reaching your top maximum position here 
on like a homing sequence or if you had macros set up in the software. So now that we have our Z-axis micro limit switch in place, what I'm going to do is take my male three pin connector off of that switch and from there I'm going to add my three conductor wire which will be going to the Z-axis specifically, just the 18 foot cable. So for this micro limit switch, we're simply going to loosen the three pin connectors and for your convenience on the micro limit switch you'll actually see the indications here for signal positive which is the, the power it's just 5 volt power that's going to display an LED light when your plunger is activated and then the ground so I'm going to explain this in the video but obviously if you get confused you can always refer back to the positions here so the way that the micro limit switch is going to be inserted is with the pins facing inside the C channel of our C beam. So since that's the orientation, basically what I need is my signal on the right side of the micro limit switch, my positive in the middle, and then my ground to the left. Now insert the male connector and double check your wires, make sure that they are corresponding here to the indications on your plate. So blue will be the signal, red here is V plus, and the ground of course is black here. So now we're gonna just throw our three conductor to the back of the machine. Don't worry about the mess, we're gonna organize our wires on the following step. So don't concern yourself with organization currently. Okay, moving forward to our next axis, which will be the X. So we're gonna to move towards the back of the machine here and find that placement for our micro limit switch. Our next micro limit switch is going to be placed on the top of this C-beam. So this is the second C-beam here from the top. And basically what we want is for that switch to interact with this gantry plate. So the main thing is we need to find the position in which this will max out. So basically the limit switch is going to be placed here. So we'll do a quick measurement of the outside of the C-beam channel here and the placement that we need that limit switch to be. So we need a measurement of approximately four inches from the end of our x-axis and we'll make a reference point there and that's where we will mount our micro limit switch. Another thing that we're going to change is the orientation of the plate. I want my micro limit switch to sit down where it's low profile so all we have to do is switch our screw out to mount in the opposite position. So simple adjustment there, just changing our parts and adding the micro limit switch four inches away from end of the x-axis. You can see that position works well and you can always check with your gantry plate by rotating the tensioning nut here. We can bring our gantry plate over and see how it interacts with the micro limit switch to truly find that position. So you can see that we have interaction there with the limit switch before we reach our maxed out position on the x-axis. So now that we have that micro limit switch in place, once again we want to go ahead and connect our three conductor wire, which will be at 18 feet for the x-axis. So we'll take our connector off once again, and once again we should have blue on the right side, red in the middle, and ground to the left. And that's with our pins facing upright. Once you have your wires inserted, we're going to connect this back to the micro limit switch. And now that we have our x-axis micro limit switch in place, let's go ahead and move on to the y-axis. So on the y-axis, on the right side of my machine, you can see that we've brought our machine forward for squaring purposes. And basically this is the max out position here for the y-axis. So when we insert this micro limit switch, we need to make sure that we engage the plunger onto the gantry plate. So basically what you should see is the plunger is pressed down against the gantry plate. So when we reach this position, it will activate the micro limit switch before it grinds on our cast corners here underneath. And if you need to, you can always push the gantry back further just to ensure that there's no complications here with the y-axis and how it functions. So next we'll add our 13 foot three conductor wire for this micro limit switch. So I'm simply pulling off that connector and we'll insert our wires just as we did before. Blue to the right, red in the center, 
ground to the left with our pins facing upright. And you can always double check your wiring by the indications here on the micro limit switch. So we do have the blue with the signal, red positive with the V plus, and black with the ground. And now that we've completed our last micro limit switch here, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we are going to be labeling our wires. So what I have here is some um, painter's tape. Any scotch tape or anything like that will work great. Basically, we're just gonna wrap this around the end of the wire. That way we know which wire is which when we're connecting them to our controller board. So what we need to gather is our painter's tape and a permanent marker. And we're gonna start first with the Z axis, which is on the left side of my machine currently. So the Z axis is up top here. This is our motor. So what I'm gonna do is trace the wire back to its origin. So right here is our four conductor wire. And since we're labeling a motor, you'll always take a look at the conductor. So basically four conductor is gonna be a motor and three conductor will be our micro limit switches. So it's a good way to differentiate the two. Um, and of course, you always wanna trace it back to the origin. So we know this is the Z axis motor. So I'm gonna take some painter's tape here and I'm going to wrap this all the way around the wire. And the reason for doing so and not creating a flag for labeling is because we're gonna run all these wires through drag chain. So if you have a flag, it's gonna rip off and you're not gonna know which wire is which. So just go ahead and wrap that all the way around. And I'm just gonna label this ZM for Z motor. All right, moving forward, staying here on the Z axis, we're gonna go ahead and take the Z axis micro limit switch and label that one. Once again, tracing it back from the origin. This is a three conductor wire, so we know it's our micro limit switch. So taking painter's tape once again, just wrap that around. I'm gonna label this ZML for Z micro limit. Moving forward, over here to the right of the machine, we'll have our X axis motor as well as our Y axis micro limit switch. And on the back of the machine, you'll have both Y1 and Y2 motors. So before we move to the right side of the machine, we know our x-axis micro limit switch is on the back of our C-beam here, so I'm gonna start there and label this one before I move to the right of my machine. Once again, this will be a three conductor wire because it is our micro limit switch. And like we did the Z micro limit, I'm gonna label this XML for X micro limit. Okay, next we can go ahead and move to the right side of the machine where we will find our x-axis motor and Y axis micro limit switch. Okay, over here at the right side of the machine, we have our X axis motor. So I'm gonna find the end of that wire. Once again, this is gonna be a four conductor wire. And I will label this one XM for X motor. Next, moving to the Y axis micro limit switch. I'm just gonna locate the end of that wire. Once again, this is gonna be a three conductor wire. And we will label this one YML for Y micro limit switch. Once that's completed, we'll move to the back of the machine to label both our Y1 and Y2 motors. Okay, on the back side of the machine, what we have here is our standard Y1 motor is how I'm going to identify this. And this is on the same, the same axis as our Y axis micro limit switch. So since this is all gonna run into the drag chain and mount to our single L bracket here, I'm gonna identify this as Y1. Next to it will be the Y2 motor. So that's how I'm gonna identify these motors. It really isn't a big deal if you switch those, but we want you to stay consistent here in the build video because your gerbil settings are gonna be identified as we identify the motors here. So since the rotation will be different on the opposite side, you might have some conflicting issues when you add your settings. So just make sure you do label this Y1. The second will be Y2. So just label that Y1 motor and we'll move to our second and label that Y2 motor. And now that we have all of our wires labeled here, we're ready to move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be assembling our X-axis drag chain to the back of our X-axis here. So where our cable tray is located on the back is where we're gonna be assembling this. So we're gonna need our drag chain at a 1500 millimeter length We'll need our corrugated tubing here at one foot, one M3 T-nut, 
two M3 8mm screws, four drop-in T-nuts, five M5 8mm screws, one double L bracket, three flexible tubing clamps, a slot cover at 1500 millimeters, and the tooling that I'll be using is my three millimeter ball driver, two millimeter ball driver, and a pair of snips. So the first thing that we need to do on this step is add our corrugated tubing here to the Z-axis, which is gonna be for wire management. So let's go ahead and turn our attention towards the back of our Z-axis. So at the top of the Z-axis here, you'll see that we have two cables from our motor and then of course the Z-axis micro limit switch. So locating the ends of these wires, basically what I'm gonna do is slide these through our flexible tubing here. So using one of our M5 eight millimeter screws and a drop in T-nut, we're going to thread in the screw here to the flex tubing clamp and thread in that drop in T-nut So here on the front track here of the C-beam on the Z-axis, we're going to attach the flexible tubing clamp. And as you can see, that position fits nicely. It's not interfering with your gantry plate at all. Okay, so tucking those wires back in, basically you want most of the wire hidden if possible. And then we'll move back to the back side here, the back brace of our X carriage plates and we're going to mount this corrugated tubing on the back side. So taking one more of our flexible tubing clamps here, I'm going to position this on the upper side of the 20 by 80 here. Once again, just kind of getting that clamp pressed down, add that eight millimeter screw, hold it in position and add that drop in T-nut. And from there, I'm gonna go ahead and tie that T-nut into the second track from the left side of the 20 by 80. Okay, now that we have one flexible tubing clamp in position, we're going to clamp the bottom here and insert the eight millimeter screw and drop in Tina into that second slot once again and put that one into position. Okay, just double check those, make sure that they're nice and secure. That looks great. Next, we're gonna move to adding our double L bracket right underneath here, and that's for the mounting of our drag chain. So bringing in the double L bracket, once again, we wanna pay attention here to the inner seam of the double L bracket. The holes that are further away from this, this seam are basically going to mount to the end cap of our drag chain. These two that are closest to the seam will be mounting to our 20 by 80. So we're gonna add our two M5 eight millimeter screws Now that we have the double L bracket in position, it's time to go ahead and feed some of these wires through our drag chain and get ready for preparation and mounting of the drag chain. So the two wires coming out of our flexible tubing here are the two wires that are gonna be fed through our 1500 millimeter drag chain. So we have our Z motor and Z micro limit switch. Both wires are going to be fed through the drag chain and one thing that we want to do is tape the ends of these wires to really help with feeding this through the drag chain. So I'm going to add some tape here. It's again just encasing these wires. So you can see they're nice and taped here. And bringing the drag chain into position here. So basically the side that you're going to be feeding the wires through, we need to change the orientation of this end cap. So we're simply going to flip that. And that's so it can mount flush to our double L bracket. And from there, I'm going to go ahead and feed my wires through the drag chain. So once you see the wires coming through the opposite end of the drag chain, we're just going to pull all that slack through. And you can see that the drag chain is going to mount to the double L bracket on the second hole. So basically what we're going to do now is add our M3 eight millimeter screw and one of our M3 T nuts, and we're going to tie this drag chain into place. So on the drag chain end cap, you'll see that there's three holes. There's one in the center and two on the outer ends. We're gonna use the hole that's on the right side of the end cap, and I'm gonna run my M3 eight millimeter screw through that position. And using the M3 T-nut, I'm gonna tie that into position. And at that point, 
you'll see that your drag chain is in line with the cable tray. So next we need to add our slot cover here into our cable tray. So basically what we're going to do is insert our 1500 millimeter slot cover in this position once we've inserted our x-axis micro limit switch. So I'm going to locate the end, my x-axis micro limit switch, and I'm going to feed this underneath the drag chain until I reach the opposite end with the additional wires. So taking the end of my x-axis micro limit switch, I'm going to feed that through one of the bottom sections here of the drag chain right before that end cap, and we're going to pull all that slack through that section. Now on the opposite end of the cable tray, what we're going to do is take off our self-tapping screw and end cap off the 20 by 20 and we're going to slide our 1500 millimeter slot cover through that position to encapsulate the x-axis micro limit switch. So using a power drill we're going to loosen the self-tapping screw and that way we can feed our slot cover through this 20 by 20. So underneath the drag chain so basically just getting some slack here on the x-axis micro limit switch. We're going to position the slot cover inside the track and push that through until we reach the opposite end of the 20 by 20. Okay, once you feed the slot cover all the way through, leave yourself enough slack here on the three conductor wire so you can position your micro limit switch in a vertical orientation. So I've got that complete. Basically now what I'm going to do is put back my end cap. Now we'll turn our attention to the opposite side of the machine where we're going to cut off the additional slack of the slot cover and then mount our drag chain. So basically you can see that the additional, let's say about 200 millimeters is taken off. That way we have access to our M3 T-nut here and our cable tray assembly. So basically I just snipped off that additional excess, no big deal. And from there we're going to move our M3 T-nut back slightly so we can access the center hole here of the drag chain end cap and using the M3 eight millimeter screw I'm going to tighten that down into place. You can see I just moved that end cap back slightly. Don't over tighten the M3 eight millimeter screw. You don't want to deform the plastic of the drag chain. But now that we have our drag chain mounted it's time to go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we are going to be assembling our Y-axis drag chain to our Y-axis here. So in this step, we'll need to gather our 1500 millimeter drag chain, one double L bracket, two M3 eight millimeter screws, two M5 eight millimeter screws, two M3 T-nuts, two drop-in T-nuts, a 1500 millimeter slot cover, and of course the tooling that I'll be using, the three millimeter ball driver, two millimeter ball driver, some snips, and some painter's tape. So to get started on this step first, we're going to feed all of our wires from our x-axis drag chain through our y-axis drag chain. The only additional wire that's going to be added to the y-axis drag chain is our x-axis motor. So with the x-axis motor incorporated into the wires that are going to be fed through the additional drag chain, what we're going to do is find the ends of all of our wires. So as you can see, we have our x motor and x micro limit from the x-axis drag chain, the x-micro limit, and then of course the x-motor here is going to be added as well. So basically we're going to add these to the bundle and we're going to go ahead and tape these together to feed this through the y-axis drag chain. So now you can see we have all of our wires bundled together. So now we're going to take our y-axis drag chain, finding a location that we're going to insert our wires in, which will be this location. Next, once again, we want to go ahead and flip this end cap around based on the way that it'll be mounting to our double L bracket. And let's go ahead and feed these wires through. So once you have the wires fed through, we're simply going to pull the slack through the drag chain at this point. Okay, now that we have all the slack pulled through the drag chain, basically want to leave a little excess here because we are going to be mounting the drag chain to our 20 by 80 column here. So next we need to add our double L bracket. Once again, you want to make sure that the seam that is closest to the holes here is mounting to the 20 by 80. And we'll use two of our eight millimeter screws and two drop in T-nuts to the M5 eight mil screws. And at that point, I'm going to go ahead and mount my double L bracket in line with these two cast corners on the top side of the gantry plate. 
Okay, now that I have the double L bracket in place, I'm going to position my drag chain to the second hole on the double L bracket here on the right side. And I'm gonna use one of my M3 eight millimeter screws and M3 T-nuts to tie that into place. And on the drag chain end cap, the left hole is the one that I'm gonna be mounting to. Okay, so at this point we have our drag chain mounted here to our Y-axis column. So now we need to move to the back side of the machine and mount that to our single L bracket. So once again, using the left hole here on the end cap of the drag chain, I'm gonna bring in my M3 eight millimeter screw and run that through the single L bracket. And basically what I'm gonna do is slide my machine off so I can add my M3 T-nut underneath. So with my machine slid off to the side here, I'm gonna go ahead and tie on the M3 T-nut. Okay, lastly, we are going to be adding the 1500 millimeter slot cover here to the bottom channel of the C-beam. Basically what we're gonna be adding in that slot cover is our Y-axis micro limit switch here. So what I'm gonna do is run my Y-axis micro limit switch through the gantry plate. And I'm gonna run all that slack through so I can simply add the slot cover. And on the right side of my gantry plate, what I'm simply going to do is add my slot cover encapsulating that three conductor wire and I'm gonna push this down until it reaches the point right underneath the micro limit switch. And then I'm gonna to continue to run this slot cover all the way down. And at the end here, you'll see we have some additional slack we need to cut off. So I'm gonna cut off approximately 40 millimeters. And at that point, you see we have plenty of room here for our wire to come through and meet up with the rest. And that completes the assembly of our Y-axis drag chain. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be assembling our flexible tubing onto the back of our machine. So essentially what we're gonna do is run all of our wires through the flexible tubing, keeping everything nice and organized. And we're gonna run it across the back of the 20 by 40 here to allow for the position of our black box to take place here towards the middle of the machine profile. So in this step, we'll need four of our M5 eight millimeter screws, four drop-in T-nuts, and four flex tubing clamps. And of course, for my tooling, I'm gonna to use my three millimeter ball driver. So taking the rubber bands here off of my flex tubing, I'm gonna come over here to the left side of my machine. And basically what I'm gonna do is encapsulate all of these wires within my flex tubing. So you'll see that we have a crease here. Basically what you're gonna do is feed the wires all the way through the flex tubing. Okay, once all the wires are encapsulated here into the flex tubing, I'm gonna pull some of the slack through in order to get a nice mounting position here to my 20 by 40. So I'm simply gonna lay this down across the profile of the machine. I'm gonna start here at the left side of the machine with the flex tubing clamp, an eight millimeter screw and drop in T-nut. And we'll go ahead and mount that into position. So moving on down the length of my corrugated tubing, once again, I'm gonna add an additional flex tubing clamp here and on down the corrugated tubing. Okay, now that we have our flexible tubing clamps assembled here to the back of our machine profile, what we're now gonna do is adjust the length of our wires. So basically what you can see here is we have an excess of wires and the reason for having the excess is to give you mounting options. So I'm gonna be mounting the black box to the back right side of the machine. Now if you wanted to mount it underneath your table or if you wanted to mount it to another work surface, you do have the additional length in order to do so. So what I'm gonna do, just to give myself options later on, if I do wanna change and mount my black box on a table or underneath the table, I'm gonna keep the excess length. So what I'm gonna do is pull any excess that I have here on the back side, and I'm gonna bundle that on the back left of the machine. And at that point, I'll give myself consistent lengths here with, as you can see, the Y motor is pretty much in line to connect to the black box. So unbundling these wires from our previous steps. So now from that left corner of the machine, as I was describing, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the slack through some of these longer lengths. So you can see my Y micro limit switch here. 
I was able to pull back. Now I'm going to work on the additionals. So now you can see all of my wires are consistent in length. And on the opposite side, I'm going to create a bundle and keep that excess wire just in case I want to configure my black box a little bit differently. And another thing to keep in mind is when keeping the excess wire, if that's not something that you would like to do, basically what you can do is snip down these wires to the length that's consistent with the black box and its mounting position. And from there, you don't have to worry about the additional length of wire. So now that we have this completed, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're simply going to be connecting our black box and power supply. And in addition to that, we're also going to be mounting this to the back of our machine. So in this step, we're gonna to need to gather these parts. We'll see a 24 volt power supply. You can see that this is already assembled here with the open case mounting kit. I'm gonna link a video up top here that you can follow along and build that up in a couple of minutes. The black box comes already assembled. What I've done is just taken out my four pin and three pin connectors so we can connect both our micro limit switches and motors to the black box. In addition to that, we're gonna have some cables over here. We have a two conductor power cable that's gonna connect the power supply to our black box, a power plug here for power to the power supply unit, and then of course our USB connector here for communication between our laptop and black box motion control system. In addition to that, we also have our mounting hardware, which is two M5 six millimeter screws and two drop in T nuts. I'll be using my three millimeter ball driver and flathead screwdriver on this step. So to get started, first we're gonna go ahead and bring our attention towards our wires. So this is a pretty simple process. The black box makes it extremely simple. Uh, basically what we have here is inputs for our motors and our limit switches. Also you have options for probe. And then on the back side, of course, you have your power for the power supply unit. It's going to plug in here, tool head, cooling options, auxiliary port here, door sensors, relays. We've got a lot of options here for the black box. You can always check out the black box docs, which gives you a rundown on all these descriptions and just a lot of cool features that this black box has. So uh, for this process, basically, we have all of our wires labeled here. Everything's labeled onto the black box. We just need to know how the ordered pairs are going to line up inside the motor inputs. So that being said, we have A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. These are coil pairs, and I'm gonna simplify that whole process for you just by showing you which colors are gonna be inserted where. So starting with one of our four pin connectors, I'm gonna use my flathead screwdriver and loosen these pins like we've done in previous steps. We wanna make sure that our wires can be fully inserted into the pin. And from there, we're gonna find one of our motor cables here, which is a four conductor cable. Uh, looks like I've struck the X motor here. So basically the way that this is going to work is in the same fashion that we wired up our motors. So we're gonna break off our coil pairs here, which is red, blue, green, and yellow. And from right to left, we are going to insert red, blue, green, and yellow. Once you have those wires fully inserted, I'm going to go ahead and clamp these down. Okay, just double check to make sure that your wires are fully inserted. And that looks good. So the X motor will be inserted into the X motor section here of the black box. Pretty simple. Okay, moving to our next motor. Looks like we have our Y1 motor. Once again, same exact process. We are going to insert those colors just as I did with the X motor. So on the black box, you'll see a section here for Y motor. That's our Y1. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. So next we'll have our Z motor here. It's so again, same exact process. So once again, that's red, blue, green, and yellow. And we'll find our Z motor here at the end. Go ahead and plug that in. Next, we'll grab our Y2 motor, which is hanging off of the motor on the right side of the back of the machine. And we'll go ahead and prepare this with our connector.
Okay, Y2 motor will go in the Y2 section of the black box. And next we'll work on our micro limit switches, which you'll see indications here on the top side for ground, positive, and your signal. So I'm once again gonna show you how these will be oriented in the three pin connectors. So we'll loosen these real quick. And starting here with my Z micro limit switch, basically what you should see is black on the left, red in the center, blue which is your signal on the right. The pins facing upright and clamp those down into place. And since this is the Z micro limit, I'm going to plug that into the corresponding spot. And then I'll move to my other two micro limit switches. Okay, that completes all of our wires connected here to the black box. Next, we're going to add the mounting hardware here to the black box. So basically, these outer holes are for mounting options on the black box here. So on the right side, I go to the second hole up. I added my six millimeter screw and a drop in T-nut. And then on the opposite side, I'm gonna have to pull one of my motor plugs here. This is my X motor, that way I can access the hole. And plug that motor back in. And from there, using the three millimeter ball driver, and go ahead and mount this into position. Okay, now that our black box is mounted onto our 20 by 40 here, I'm gonna take my Y2 motor and kind of run that underneath and prepare that for our wire management step, which we'll use a slot cover here on the right side, some zip ties to get everything nice and tidy. So next we're gonna turn our attention here to the power supply unit. First thing that we're gonna check is you'll see this yellow indication here for a voltage setting. If you're here in the States, you're gonna set that to a 115. If you're in another country, you're gonna set that to a 230. So make sure that you do have that set to a 115 or you will not have power here to your power supply. Uh, this is a pretty simple process. We're gonna be plugging in our power plug here for the power supply unit. You simply plug that into place. From there, you'll have your power cable that'll run to your black box. So you can plug that into either one of these inputs. And bringing our attention to the black box, we will plug in the opposite end. So right above the fuse here, we'll have the power input for the black box. Simply plug that in. And then of course we have our USB cable. We're gonna take the serial port side here and plug that into the input on the black box. So from there, we can move the power supply to any location that you desire to mount it. For me, I'm gonna put this underneath the machine. Once I plug this in, I'll be able to power on my whole system. So now that we have our wires configured, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be managing our wires. So what we have here is our zip ties and a 500 millimeter slot cover. And in this step, I'll be using my snips. But basically, we're gonna be going around the machine and just making sure that our wires are nice and tidy. We're gonna zip tie our connectors to reinforce the strength of the connection and just make sure everything looks aesthetically pleasing. So first, I wanna turn our attention to the back right side of the machine and we're gonna utilize the slot cover here to tuck in our Y2 motor to the back of the machine profile. So using the slot cover, you can see that I'm gonna have a little too much, so I'm gonna take off about two inches. Snip that off, that way we can get this wire at the bottom track of this 20 by 40. Okay, with the slot cover in place, I'm gonna come over here to the motor and zip tie this connector as well as the additional length of wire. So taking one of my zip ties, I'm gonna take this around each connector. And bring that around and zip tie this to ensure a nice secure connection. And once I have the connector zip tied here. I'm basically gonna bundle these wires and zip tie it to 
one of the 40 millimeter spacers here on the bottom of the motor. Once we have that in place, we'll move our attention to the left side. So here at the black box, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in another zip tie and basically get all of these wires here nice and tidy. And snip off the excess here. And over here at the left side is where we're gonna have the excess of wires for multiple mounting options of the black box. So I'm gonna hang on to the excess and I'm gonna tuck it underneath the motor here. So simply add two of your zip ties together. I'm gonna to create one large zip tie. And from there, I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie this bundle. Okay, once this bundle is zip tied, once again, taking two more of my zip ties, I'm going to attach that to the flex tubing here. And once I have that in place, I'm gonna go ahead and snip off the excess here, the zip tie. Now we have this in position. So we'll go ahead and move forward to the X axis motor. And at this location, I'm going to zip tie all of my wires coming out of the X axis drag chain. Okay, now that we have our x-axis motor and wires bundled here. We're gonna to move to the z-axis next. Okay, up here at the z-axis, it's actually pretty well organized. So I'm gonna come in and just zip tie my connector, make sure that that connection remains. And once we have that in position, go ahead and snip off the excess there. Okay, now that we have all of our wires managed here, we've got everything nice and tidy, we're gonna move back to the black box. We're gonna grab our laptop and go ahead and connect to our black box and we're gonna run through the software. So basically we're gonna download OpenBelt's controlled software. We're also gonna run through Cam and get you started on an air cut. Make sure that everything is functioning correctly on your machine. So taking our USB cable here from our black box, we're gonna go ahead and plug that into our laptop. And let's go ahead and move on to the software portion of this video. So the first thing that we need to do is open up our browser so we can download OpenBuilds control software. Go ahead and type in openbuilds.com. And this is the OpenBuilds forum. This is a great place to actually come and share your build, inquire about new ideas. We have a ton of resources and com the community is full of people willing to help and answer any questions that you might have in regards to the modular building system. As you can see here, we've got categories here dedicated to 3D printer builds, CNC router builds. We have open builds machine bundles and just all the details of all these machines, their profiles and specifics. So up at the top, we're going to select the software tab and we're gonna select open builds control. From there, you'll see options to download. I'm using a Windows based operating system. So I'll download for Windows. If you have a Mac or Linux, you would download for those options. So you would go ahead and select download for Windows. And from there, you would choose a location to save the setup on. I'm going to save it to my desktop. And once it's complete, we'll open the executable and you're going to run through the prompts. And finally, you're going to install. So now that we have OpenBuilds Control downloaded, what you'll see here is your shortcut for the application. So we're gonna go ahead and open up OpenBuilds Control. You'll see that it's successfully started. And from there, we will establish the connection to OpenBuilds Control with our black box. So up at the top here, we're gonna select the FTDI, which our serial com is six. And from there, you will connect. The first thing that you'll see is the alarm state here. You can just simply unlock alarm. That's just for the user's protection, just in case you did have your machine powered on and you tried to jog. Now, before we go over the details in the control software and operate our machine, what we need to do is go ahead and power on our power supply. So you just simply hit that power switch. Make sure that your black box is turned on and you'll hear that your motors will engage. And the reason that we're going to do this is so we can tension our tension nut on each end of the lead screw. 
And that's to apply the tension so we don't have whip with these long runs of lead screws. So here at the front of the machine, we're basically going to loosen up our tension nut. And at that point, I have a pair of clines. I've got my ball driver here to tighten down that set screw when I apply tension. And when we have our motors locked, basically what we're going to do is apply tension to each lead screw. And the motor is going to prevent the lead screw from just turning and moving the gantry. So the best way to explain this is if you tension it too much, you're going to hear your stepper motor pop. And that's a lost step. So we want to be on the cusp of losing a step, but actually right before that, we'll tighten down the tensioning nut. So that applies a proper amount of tension without losing a step. If you lose a step, you're going to have to retension. So I'm going to go ahead and give you an example. So I'm on the cusp of losing a step. If I go any further, pop. So that's a lost step there. So what I'm going to do is readjust my tension nut. And basically the reason that I'm doing that is so I have access to that set screw. And I'm going to reassess tension. Once again, right before I'm about to lose a step there, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. And that's a good amount of tension that's added to the lead screw. So now we're going to go to the left side, which is our Y2, and we're going to add tension to that lead screw as well. Okay, once again, we're going to loosen the set screw. I'm going to reposition this tension nut. And from there, I'm going to add tension. You can see I lost a step there. Now I'm right on the verge of losing another step. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. So now we have tension to our second Y axis. So now let's move to the X axis motor. It's the same exact process. We're going to loosen that, that set screw and we're going to apply tension. Okay, now that we have our tension assessed to our whole system, let's go ahead and move back to the software. Okay, moving back here to OpenBuild's control software. Now that we have tension assessed to our lead screws, it's time to go ahead and configure our Gerbil settings into our machine profile. So up at the top here, we'll see Gerbil settings. We're going to select Gerbil settings, and we're going to load a default setting. Since this is an OpenBuild's machine bundle, we'll have a default option set for this machine profile. So if you go to the drop-down menu here, you'll see OpenBuild's lead machine. We'll select that and you're going to select the OpenBuild's Lead 1515. From there, you're going to save to firmware. Our limit switches are installed, so we're going to go ahead and select that. Select yes. And once you have your default setting downloaded into Gerbil settings, we're going to go back to the control panel, and from there, we're going to jog our machine around. So basically, we want to make sure that all of our axes are functioning as they should. So that's based on positive and negative movements, from each axis. So positive and negative movements basically describe the direction of which each axis is going to move. So here on the digital readouts, you'll see that we have some negatives and some positives. We're going to zero that out. So I can show you here of the indications that are marked by the digital readouts when we make a positive and negative movement on our machine. So positive movement, moving this to 10 millimeter increments here since we're operating the Y axis. A positive movement is going to move this gantry system towards the back, towards the black box motion control system. So let's go ahead and try that. And as you can see, indicated here on the digital readouts as well as the direction that we see the machine moving in, that is a positive movement. So that's exactly what we should see. A negative movement is going to move it back towards the front of the machine. Also on the digital readouts, you can see we're reading negative 70. Same with the x-axis. A positive movement is going to move this gantry system to the right of the machine if you're to face the front, and then a negative movement towards the micro limit switch on the left side of the machine if you're to face the front. And that's operating flawlessly. So let's move this to one millimeter increments and try the z-axis. The z-axis, the gantry system, should move down towards the work surface at a negative movement and back up towards the micro limit switch with a positive movement.
And as you can see, that's functioning perfectly. So all of our settings are correct. Everything looks fantastic. Let's move to the homing cycle. So we have all of our micro limit switches connected. Now, a great place to start is the troubleshooting tab here, Open Builds Control. In the troubleshooting tab, you're going to see inputs and end stops. So we're going to actually test each one of our micro limit switches before we run a homing cycle to make sure that we are receiving a signal to each micro limit switch. So testing the Y limit switch, you can see that the alarm is triggered. And at that point, I'm going to leave the alarm state on so we can see the indication here of the Y limit switch. So you can see here it displays on. And with that indication described, you'll test the Z limit. It should display on and the X limit, which should display on. So also that you have probe and door sensor and additional buttons here for any of the settings that you've set up on your control board. Uh, we're just focusing on the limit switches here though, but this is a great place to experience any of these signals being sent from the controller to a device before you actually operate the device. So we're gonna unlock the alarm, go back to our control, and since we know that our limit switches are functioning correctly, we're gonna go ahead and run a homing cycle. So you can see that the homing cycle starts with the Z-axis first, then moves to the X and Y. And what you see there is basically an indication that the gantry plate has hit the limit switch, it does a debounce, backs away, finds a position, touches the limit switch again, and backs away a couple millimeters. So the homing cycle works perfect. So now we have a machine that is operating in a manner that it should. So at this point, we're going to go over some details of OpenBuilt's control software. And I have to say, this control software is extremely intuitive. That's one of the main focuses of OpenBuilt is to make sure that every user is comfortable when using this interface. And not only that, but OpenBuilt's control is loaded with wizards and tools and quick calibration options to really help you along your CNC journey. Whether you're building a custom machine or you're using a standard bundle from OpenBuilds, this control software is definitely top of the line. So up at the top here, we've already gone over troubleshooting. We're going to go back in here and also show you just some additional options. Or if you're to download a new version of the software, you can see here in the change log, it'll display some of the changes that have been made by our software engineers. You also have options to flash uh, Gerbil, the latest versions of Gerbil onto your control boards. You also have application diagnostics. So if you feel like your laptop is being bogged down, you can always disable some of the features like the 3D viewer, uh, serial log, so on and so forth. Also, you have the OpenBuilds forum. So if you have questions, you can select this and it'll take you directly to the forum. So you can ask questions and the OpenBuilds team will be able to answer any questions that you might have. In addition to that, we also have our Gerbil settings, which we've already gone over. This is more of an advanced setting. So if you were to come in here and want to adjust your machine parameters, slow down some speeds, adjust inversion of an axis, depending on your configuration, this is where you would do that. Now, if you have a machine bundle, I wouldn't suggest going in here quite yet. Um, definitely use the default options. Those are pretty conservative settings. But later down the road, there's information provided on the forum in relation to these settings. So definitely do some research there and you find what works for you best. Now back to the control tab. This is where a lot of the cool features are available. So we have probe here, which is the probing wizard. So if you haven't yet, definitely uh, purchase one of the XYZ probes. This will make your life a whole lot easier when finding the zero point for your machine. So basically what that means is any material that you're going to mill into, you have to establish a zero point. So this XYZ probe basically does the work for you versus trying to do the paper trick, which is sliding a, a thin piece of paper underneath the bit to find your zero point for the Z. Um, also finding the, the center point for the X and Y, depending on your datum positions. It's, it's pretty frustrating to have to do it manually. So the XYZ probe definitely simplifies that process. Within the probing wizard, we also have the automatic feature, which basically gives you your bit dimensions through a probing cycle. And then you have the standard XYZ zero, or you can go into X zero, Y zero, or just Z zero. So you can use this as a standard touch off if that's what you need. So definitely a really cool feature there. 
Also in Open Builds Control, we have the tool on and off feature. So if you have a, an IoT relay, this is where you could turn on that router, variable speed spindle, or laser. Um, you can also, if you have a laser set up, you would go in here and you can actually fire the laser based on a percentage point. And then of course the tool off, you can, you can turn that off here. Also you have wizards and tools. So we have a surfacing wizard, which is great. So that's probably one of the first things that you'll do on the CNC machine is surface your spoiler board. We also have the mobile jog widget, which is really cool. You scan this QR code and you're given an interface. Basically, you can operate your machine off of. Also in Wizards and Tools, we have the Calibrate X, Y, Z axis. You also have the Calibrate Servo Pen. If you're designing a pen plotter, there's options there for you. And also, if you want to customize shortcut key assignments, we have that option as well. And then the flashing tool down below. So if you have a control board that needs flashing, you can do that right here through OpenBuilt's control software. In addition to that, we also have our 3D viewer, which is a great addition. So you can actually see your, your code here and how you created it in the CAM software that you use. It also simulates and runs in real time. So as you're running a job, you'll actually see that in the uh, 3D viewer. Next to that, we have the serial console, which is gonna give you all the descriptions of the firmware that you currently have set up in your control board and also any complications that you might have that you need support on. So it's a great place to understand the functionality of your control board. Also macros here, you can set up custom macros for your machine depending on how you manufacture projects. And then the G-Code editor, you can create custom code here. So a lot of features here in OpenBuilds Control and once again, the best part of this is it's very user friendly. So definitely a great option here in control software. So next, now that we've operated our machine, we know all of our axes are functioning correctly. Let's go ahead and create some simple G code, which is a hello world. And we're gonna run an air cut for our machine. So basically what we need to do is go back to our browser. And at that point, we're gonna go back to software and we're gonna open up OpenBuild's CAM G code generator. And the first thing that you're gonna be met with is the application settings which controller you're using, select your machine, tool initialization, and custom defaults. So this is pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna select the black box, our machine profile, which will be the lead 1515. And at that point, you'll see the parameters here populate, and we'll go ahead and save. So next, we're going to go into our file here, and we're gonna open a Hello World example. We're gonna open up the CNC Hello World, and at that point, the code will be created here for the hello world. You can see over here the tool paths and the vectors that are going to be utilized on this particular project. You can see here the green, which describes a pocket. We have the hello, which is an inside cut. And then the world, which is going to be an outside cut. So that's three different examples of different tool paths that are going to be run on this job. So next, what we need to select is generate G code. And from there, you'll see the machine and how it's going to operate this code. And then we're gonna transfer the G code to OpenBuilds Control. So now that we have our code populated into our machine, basically what we need to do now is just set up a, a dummy zero point, which is gonna make sure that our gantries aren't gonna max out on either the top or bottom. So I'm gonna find a nice position here in the middle for an air cut. So I'm moving my x-axis 10 millimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this out slightly. And then my y-axis, I'll move back as well. And of course the z-axis will move down slightly to account for up and down motion for this job. So basically an air cut is just a dummy version of the actual run of the G-code. So we're not actually installing the router yet or the bit. We do have a video, which I'll link at the top that you can follow along to create your own hello world. It's a complete comprehensive video to show you the zero points and how to operate your machine to cut out the hello world. But for this, we're just gonna simply run a dummy version of the hello world just to make sure that everything's functioning correctly on our machine. So once we have our machine out to a position that is comfortable, we'll set the zero for X, Y, and Z. And that's very important for any job. You're gonna set the zero no matter where your machine's located, you wanna set that zero point because that's gonna tell the machine this is the start point for my project. So now that we see X, Y, and Z is zeroed out, we have an option up top here which says run job. We're gonna go ahead and select that. Now if you have any complications while running the job, 
You can abort the job, pause it, or stop the job. And of course, if all else fails, just power down your machine. So let's go ahead and run this job now. And we can follow along here with the 3D viewer. And as you can see, it's in real time of how the machine is functioning. And everything seems to be running perfectly. Okay, everything's operating as it should be. So we're gonna go ahead and stop the job. And once we stop the job, you'll be hit with an alarm. We're gonna clear that alarm. And at that point, we're just gonna go ahead and home our machine. Okay, so that completes the wiring and software of this machine. And as you can see, everything is operating flawlessly as it should. This machine profile is definitely set up for some serious production. So we're looking forward to seeing your future projects posted to openbuilds.com. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for future notifications of new videos, and dream it, build it, share it.